All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I wanna share with you the latest news involving Bitcoin, involving Ethereum, involving the metaverse, like Decentraland, like Axie, and much more. If you're interested in making money with cryptocurrency, click subscribe. We drop a video every single day demystifying this cryptocurrency market. Let's jump in. The first thing we have to talk about is the manipulation going on in this crypto market. Some of you may recognize this. This is Hillary Clinton on MSNBC, The Rachel Maddow Show, about three-ish days ago. This happened right before the crash. Interesting timing. And while I don't think this clip is what caused the crash, I'll play it for you so you have context. This is the narrative the mainstream media is pushing on the people. Case in point, in this clip, Rachel Maddow has Hillary on to talk about social media, the overreach of big tech. But Hillary brings up cryptocurrency all on her own, suggesting regulation is needed immediately because nation states like Russia, like China, can control it. Watch this. I want to mention one other thing that um, is on the horizon that people are only beginning to pay attention to, and that's the need to regulate the cryptocurrency markets. Because imagine the combination of social media, uh, the algorithms that drive social media, uh, the amassing of even larger sums of money through the control of certain cryptocurrency uh, chains. Uh, we're looking at uh, not only states such as China or uh, Russia or others uh, manipulating technology of all kinds to their advantage. We're looking at non-state actors, either in concert with states or on their own, destabilizing countries, destabilizing the dollar as the reserve currency. There are so many uh, big questions that the Biden administration must address. I just don't think we have much time. Uh, and therefore, I hope from everything I'm hearing uh, from them that that's exactly what uh, they're going to try to do. Okay, interesting clip. Give me your thoughts on this down below. In my opinion, the United States is the one that has destabilized more countries and destabilized their own U.S. dollar by printing and printing more money, way more than Bitcoin ever did. Also, half of these politicians or more probably don't even understand cryptocurrency, but are forced to make comments like this because so many people are asking. Because this innovation is moving so fast, they're forced to make a comment before they truly understand it. And let's keep going. Why are we seeing crypto crash? Because make no mistake about it, it was pure manipulation, not specifically from that one clip, but manipulation in general, like we've seen so many times in crypto before. For perspective, cryptocurrency controversy, a clip from several months ago of the mainstream media talking about the crypto market. Watch this. We're all gonna die. This is not a joke. We're all gonna die. This is not a joke. We're all going to die. This is not a joke. Wow. Outrageous. And while it's not always this clear, it's not always this obvious of the agenda of some of these mainstream figures. In my opinion, the reason we're seeing this dip in crypto as well as traditional markets because of the mainstream media's narrative on COVID variants, as well as their narrative on the Fed tapering rates. The Fed, the biggest manipulator of them all, some would say, to the monetary supply, but none of this has happened yet. This is just the fear, the narrative, the mainstream media is pushing. So what's the point? The point is that while Bitcoin fundamentals are still strong, I'll show you the data in a second. And while if either of these two things happen or get bigger, then that would be a cause for markets to dip. None of this has actually happened yet. But because of headlines like those, we are at extreme fear in the market right now. Sentiment is quite low. But moving forward, let's look at some of the data, the social data. The Thanksgiving dump caught many off guard this year as Bitcoin dropped below 54,000 for the first time since October 6th. Interest in buying the dip has subsequently spiked, indicating the crowd isn't too phased by this recent volatility. And this shows just how many people socially on social media outlets are tweeting about buying the dip. Huge spike in volume from this price point. And while you may be waiting, maybe you're hoping that Bitcoin drops a little bit lower, 
El Salvador is not taking that chance. El Salvador celebrates Black Friday and buys another 100 BTC for that 20% off dip. With the addition of those 100 coins, El Salvador now holds 1,220 Bitcoin, worth roughly $63 million following Bitcoin's recent drop. And here was that exact tweet from the president. El Salvador just bought the dip. 100 extra coins acquired with a discount. Hashtag Bitcoin. This is the first time in crypto's history where we have nation states aggressively accumulating, announcing that they bought the dip. Think about that. And the final thing before we talk altcoins that I want to show you is a little perspective on where we are in the Bitcoin cycle. The three different colors show the three different cycles from the halving. So the blue is 2012 to 2016. The orange is 2016 to 2020. And then the green is the cycle we're in now, 2020 to today. And the biggest takeaway I see is usually the cycle peaks out on average around 289 days after the halving. Meaning just based on the historical price action, we should have topped out by now. What's interesting is much like we saw in 2012 into 2013, a double bubble, two mini cycles, it appears we may potentially be setting up for a very similar move because we haven't topped out. We are grinding upward, it seems. Give me your thoughts on this down below because believe me, the haters will say we're heading down. And while the truth is, nobody can see the future, everything is possible in cryptocurrency. To me, this looks way too subdued, way too basic for the incredible awareness from NFTs, from inflation, from nation states we're seeing for this cryptocurrency space this year, right? This year, we have PayPal. This year, we have Venmo and Robinhood and El Salvador and Facebook switching their name to Meta. All of those things we have never seen in past cycles. Something to think about. Give me your thoughts down below. And next up, before we get to altcoins, I do want to give a quick 60 second plug to sponsor of the channel, OKCoin. OKCoin is a global cryptocurrency exchange, but is fully regulated in the US, which I like, and they are a better way to Bitcoin. Join the fastest growing global cryptocurrency exchange with the lowest fees around. And that's true. They do have much lower fees than the competition. And that's because they are a relatively newer exchange and they're trying to give you every single reason possible to join OKCoin. In fact, we did an interview with their head of listings about five days ago. I will link this interview down below in the video description. Great conversation on how they're able to have the cheapest fees, on how they're able to list newer coins first. Link down below, check it out. And the final thing I do want to say is OKCoin does have 100% fee-less staking. They will not take a penny if you use our link down below. So check it out, link down below. Next up, let's talk about the metaverse. A decentral land virtual land plot sells for a record $2.43 million. And just for context, this was more than double the previous record of under a million dollars. This land was sold to NFT-based virtual real estate company, Metaverse Group, for 618,000 mana. Wow. Why so high? Why would somebody pay so much for a virtual piece of land? Do they know something we don't? I bet they have a long-term perspective, whatever it is. And also, now that this virtual real estate company owns it, what do they plan on using this virtual land for? Per the statement, the virtual land will be developed to facilitate fashion shows and commerce within the exploding digital fashion industry with Metaverse Group planning partnerships with several existing fashion brands to build out their Metaverse e-commerce offerings. So we will have to see which, if any, major fashion labels choose to participate in these fashion shows. But either way, regardless, I would say this is a huge win for Decentraland as a Metaverse because people are choosing to develop in them. Very interesting. Next up, speaking of Metaverses, an Axie Infinity land plot sells for a record $2.48 million in the Axie Infinity metaverse. Outrageous. An extremely rare piece of virtual land in the crypto game Axie Infinity sold yesterday for 550 Ethereum. 
This Genesis plot is one of the rarest in the game with just 220 in existence. So here it is. This is worth 550 Ethereum, four little squares. And by the way, obviously there is a whole lot more to it. And just as a reminder on what Axie Infinity is, Axie Infinity is a play to earn game in which players collect and breed small Pokemon-like creatures called Axies, pitting them into battle with each other to earn smooth love potion cryptocurrency. So the Axie Infinity metaverse continues to grow. I'll keep you updated. Next piece of news involving Ethereum, Damien Hurst turns his Drake album art into 10,000 Ethereum NFTs. So Hurst, the artist, turned his cover for Certified Loverboy into a series of 10,000 free NFTs for collectors who hold pieces of his earlier collection. And by the way, for those of you who didn't see Drake's last album cover, it basically features a grid of the iOS pregnant women emojis in 12 different skin tones. What I found interesting about this is, number one, he gave this out completely for free for people who purchased his previous NFTs, which I found pretty cool, added value. And number two, this is super great exposure for Drake's huge audience, one of the top hip hop artists in the world, to onboard into Ethereum. And next piece of lower cap metaverse news, for horror metaverse fear, we are proud to present the Fear 3D Dungeon. And boom, actually here it is, here's the visual as I read the update. Our dungeon keeper has been busy chipping away beneath the museum stone by stone and has unearthed some ungodly ancient caverns and a vast metaverse with NFT land ownership. Land premium partners will be announced in the coming weeks, but it's very interesting to see this horror metaverse expand like this. Give me your thoughts. And that is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. And by the way, just a little bit piece of personal news. There will be a regular video tomorrow, but Monday through Thursday, like we've been mentioning, Aaron and I will be in Miami at the Decentral NFT conference, hanging out with all of you, and of course, speaking on stage, etc. So point is, Monday through Thursday, we will have interviews dropping on the channel instead of crypto news. See you tomorrow.